Hey guys, and welcome back to my Didio series. This is episode 3, and today we're going to be going back into the harbour. I'll show you how to get all of your bags, your gem bag, collectibles bag, and ingredients bag. They're all free in the game. Um, they're pretty small capacity, and you can buy larger ones from the store, but they provide you with these three without any cost. Um, there won't be a daily roll today because I logged in just before and had to restart my recording because there was some noise outside. So, back in now. We got 300 XP roll, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be starting off by showing you where to get everything. So the first person I'm going to go to is... Where are we? Felix de Caneth should give you a tiny ingredients bag. Yep, there we go. So you want to... I generally put all these in my first slot. That's full right now. I mean, obviously you don't have to organize things the same way I do, but I like to have everything in one location so I know where to look. Cool, that'll do. Um, you open it up by double-clicking, and I always hit auto-gather. And gather again, and that will automatically, every time you pick up an ingredient, it'll put it in this bag. So you don't have to worry about it taking up space in your inventory. It's very handy to have, and I use it. Oh, I use them all the time. Next, we're going to find... Where's Fitzpat Defense? My memory needs to be jogged a bit. Fitzpat. Ah, well, we'll come back to him. We're going to head to Baudry Cardamon first. So he's down by the water, and he'll give you a small collectibles bag. Oh, this fits, Pat. So he gives you a small gem bag, and it makes you pick up the quest, but that's okay. So also, we're going to auto-gather, and get that all sorted up, and finally Baudry Cardamon. I believe you get the bag from Baudry without having to complete the quest. If you have to complete the arc, then we might do that but I think he just gives it to you right off the bat. Talk to this guy. No, oh, he just gives it to you as well. So there's no obligation to do these quests, they're just there if you'd like to. I don't usually run these um, this arc here because it's not the greatest XP at this level, there are better quests to do. So I might skip it this time around. But that gets you started with all of your bags that you need. And they're all in the harbour, nice and easy to find. Now we've got two level 2 hirelings, that's good. What's this? Garbage. What I might do quickly is run over here and sell stuff up because our space is running out. Ooh. There we go. What's this? Scepter. Ah, okay. Um, we'll sell that. This, this, this. Reflex saves. We might keep that. Don't need that. There we go. And this button here, sell gems, it won't show you your gems that are in your bag when you sell, but you can click sell gems and it will empty your bag for you. That's nice and handy, so you don't have to empty your bag every time you want to sell things. Okay, so the next quest we're going to do is information is key, and you pick that up in the bar over here. It's next to Butcher's Path and um, Kobold's New Ringleader, the highest XP quests at level 2, I think, at least in the harbour. And I always run it because it's very quick to run, and pretty simple. My character could walk any more slowly. Also, I'm going to check how many points we have. I think we left off on 50. It's been a couple of days since I recorded. Yeah, we got 50 points. So, when I was making this character, I chose to go on Orion, which is a server that I have previously played on. And that might not have been a good idea, because if you're starting off on a brand new server you've never played on, you'll get 100 DDO points right off the bat for reaching a very small favor reward. I don't get that, because I've already had characters on Orion. But if you're choosing, or you're playing for the first time and you're choosing a new server, you'll get a big amount of points for very little work. Which you can spend on one of the expansions right away. It's very handy, and I should have mentioned that initially, I'd just forgotten, because it's so long ago since I actually logged onto a server for the first time, that, yeah, it's just gone for me. Somebody mentioned it to me the other day. So we go to Osgood's basement. We can only do normal. Bit of a shame. I'm going to keep rerunning quests in this game to a minimal in this playthrough. There is some merit to doing it, especially if you're capped at normal, usually, because once you've done it on normal, um, if you're free to play, you can then run it on hard, and then elite, and so on. So you get higher rewards, obviously, for those difficulties, and some quests are such good XP that it's worth running them on every difficulty, because you just, you'll have to grind somewhere else that's annoying to get the equivalent amount of XP points. But I'm only going to rerun a few quests. I forgot to get my spell ingredients, but I don't think that matters. 
gonna be jumping all that much. What's going on today? Smash these crates. Getting a bit of lag. I'm gonna try and look past it. We don't have Featherfall, but there is water down here, so I don't believe you take damage. You do take damage, you take a lot of damage. So if you're attempting that, don't do it. Take the ladder. Another thing worth mentioning, this here, Divine Vitality, um, a lot of clerics have this, and this actually restores your spell points. I haven't mentioned in the past, but the only way to restore your spell points is with restaurants, obviously, and with very rare potion drops. You might get it as a reward in a chest, but you cannot buy spell point potions anywhere in this game. You're going to have to get lucky and find them. So having a cleric with divine vitality is very useful because they can buff you up if you need a little bit more, if you've used these spell points. And I do that very often at high levels. It will skip one of their turn undead abilities. But a lot of quests, they won't be using it because there is no undead and it goes to waste. Another thing, if you're fighting oozes, it will do damage to your weapons unless you have a specially enchanted weapon that bypasses that, something like Blue Shine. There's an item called Muckbane, which is a rare item in the lower levels, and that lets you hit oozes forever without taking damage to your weapons. It's not the end of the world to have weapon damage if it's just a throwaway like this. I don't really care. Usually you can repair it. It might decrease its ability to be repaired in the future could do permanent damage, but I'm not too concerned. Okay, valve. I've already come up on some shrines. I'm playing this just as the fastest route. You can go off exploring, obviously. I'd never tell you what you have to do in a dungeon, but this is my preferred way. I've also disabled the audio to the dungeon master, I'm sure you've noticed already. That's just because it gets very hard to talk over the top of someone with such a beautiful voice as the lovely voice actors that did this game. And in some quests they don't stop talking. It's very hard to get a word in. Alright, so first we're going to go up here. Boink. Yeah, the lag's not horrific this morning, but it's worse than the last few times I've played. My first time back in a couple of days, so I was having trouble remembering what I was up to last time. But today, I think we shall attempt to hit level 3. I think that'll be fairly easy. Um, this quest will take us over this bubble, and then we only need one more. I might do some more after that, because it could be a very short video otherwise. And at level 3, it opens up a lot of nicer quests to do, in my opinion. There's a couple you can run in the marketplace. Um, you can start the chain out in Tangle Root if you wanted. It's yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Tangle Root's a pack or an expansion. I'm not sure what the correct term is that you got in that free bundle, and it's worth doing. It can be slightly repetitive, but the XP for level is amazing, and it teaches you some useful skills for other dungeons in the future. We are. So you have to pick up this artifact container and that'll finish the quest for you. And that's pretty decent for the amount of time we spend in here. I'm used to giving me about 3,000 because I usually play on elite difficulty when I'm running this one for the first time. We've also just received mail, so that would be us getting a favor reward. And if we check our store points, I reckon we'll be on 75. Yes. So, only 25 more to go before we can buy Ravenloft, which is going to be a very nice expansion for us. Without Ravenloft, levels 10 through 13 are a bit repetitive. It's very useful to get. If there, are any, if there was any one pack out of the four that are discounted, I'd recommend it would be Ravenloft. Um, Sean is a very close second for me. I think that's an amazing pack as well. Uh, Harkening. Yeah, it's all kind of meh. 
sell up again. I like to have an empty inventory. That's just listen and resistance. I don't really want that. We we're gonna put that on actually, although it's not that useful. I tend to have a very empty. Ah, there you go. That's a rapier that had been damaged before. I have a very empty inventory until I start getting items I actually like, and then it just becomes a jumbled mess of filled up slots that I can't manage. Um, if you want to check your mail, you have to go to one of these scroll pictures on the map. I'm not going to do that right now because it's a bit of a walk, but um, I'll point out some other symbols that are useful to know. These grape looking symbols there, I'm not sure what they're actually supposed to be, those are collectors, so if you collect enough of a certain item, you can hand it into those guys and get an augment, which is uh, a type of enchantment you can slot on your weapons, I think I've mentioned it before. Sometimes their demands are quite high for what, like, what you're getting, and they only give you a random augment. You have to buy store points if you want to choose your augment right off the bat. Or you can keep grinding away, or you can wait until you get a good loot drop and hope to get the right augment out of a chest. So there, there are lots of options. There we go. Jump into Haberdasher. This is a very nice quick quest. Good XP for what it is, I suppose. Do we need to summon. I, I mean, we probably don't need to summon the Highland, but I'm going to make a habit of being cautious and to get people in the habit of, you know summoning them every time they go in a dungeon. I often also forget my buffs if I'm running lots of dungeons back to back. Didio runs a Halloween event every year called the Night Revels and they choose like, I think it's 10 of the uh, older more famous dungeons and they turn them into a Halloween themed dungeon with lots of objectives so you can get massive rewards in those and lots of collectibles so you can go and buy one of one of, one of a kind items from the vendor they're cool cosmetics and stuff as well so they there are a few events like that throughout the year that kind of bring people back to DDO for a while and remember why they play it and then for me anyway I'm speaking for myself I tend to fizzle out again and maybe don't come back for a couple of weeks or a month or so And that's it. As you can see, that's a very simple quest. We get a chest and it's bumped us over. So, Deceiving necklace of spot. I will slot the spot on. I want to be able to see my traps. It does That takes away our intelligence necklace though. Oof. Now nah, I'm going to take the 24 universal spell power. So what that means, uh, the hint's kind of in the name, is just all of your spell powers on this list are buffed um, by that item. So, yeah, it's very handy to have. It's better than one specific buff to one specific spell power. What's this? Uh, curse spewing, Vorpal hit, their cursed impact increases the threat range. Uh, well, we've got venomous quarter stuff. I mean, these are much the same. I'm gonna grab this because it does more damage. And occasionally it's good to slot some items here in case one of them breaks mid-fight and you want to put another one on straight away. If you're using two, if you're doing two-handed um, playthrough, then you can slot two weapons into one of these and then drag it out, and it will make it an item set which you can then slot. So that's handy, or a sword and a shield, or whatever you want. You can get all your sets done that way. Cool, doing Dirks quickly. Whoop. I don't know why we're having trouble getting in here. There we go. So a lot of these harbor quests are pretty basic. And they're not repetitive. Uh, maybe they are for me because I've done them so many times, but I tend to blitz through these earlier level quests just because I know them like off by heart. I will forget some things, but generally speaking I can remember which way I need to go and everything, so it makes it a lot shorter. Like I said before, that don't feel any pressure to just blitz through things like this. I, um, I actually kind of get annoyed sometimes if I go in parties and everyone wants to completely run through everything at like top speed as quick as possible. I'm just not one of those types of players. I wouldn't say, I won't, don't get annoyed at them. I just find other people that I'd like to run quests with. That's a much more common style of playing though in this game, I find.
little optional here. So Radiance Law, so that's a plus 5 crit chance to our Light on Alignment spells. Not the kind of spells we're going to be using, so I won't equip that. This character, as I said before, is just negative and maybe fire and acid later on. Oh, I'm going to stay away from these guys, I don't want to break my new stuff. Good god. What have I done? And that's a warning that I've done something wrong. Just cast on these guys. Oh, accidentally shot the barrel. That works out. We got the trap warning. I think there's a fire trap next to us. Yes, indeed. So I could either be very cruel and make my hireling walk through there, or I can just find it first. This is one of those traps where if you run through it, it won't blast again. It's a one-time thing. Is that all? I think. What's that? Resist. Found one of the Kobold brothers. I get that breakables bonus. And there's something incredibly satisfying about smashing these barrels. There was a lever back there to open up an optional area, but I'm not going to bother with it. You can see that it's probably a very small amount of um, reward for what we're doing. Yeah, like 90 and 45. So, it just isn't something that can be bothered with. Ah, uh, that's no better than what we have. So, not only does XP reward go up with difficulty, but the rewards do as well. These are all probably pretty commonplace gaming tropes that you find across all games, but I find it worth to point it out. Ooh, more breakables. What's this do? Is this opening the rear section? I thought the other level was. Oh, that just does something. Here we go. Might take us to the borderlands after this and show you how to get a custom staff or weapon that you can begin the playthrough with. It's maybe slightly outdated for now, but I think it's worth it I show you. There are a few things in the Borderlands Wilderness area you can do, including farming things for a mount and lots of uh, rare drops in the chests and stuff. It's a good introduction to Borderlands areas. Oh, plus 10 jumping pot, why not? You can always sell this stuff and, like I was saying the other day, you don't get much money to start with in this game, so it's worth scrimping and saving everything you can. Talk to Dirk and then we'll get the hell out of here. What you got for me? Devoted? Nope. Uh, yeah, same old, not much. I think if you go options and you go to gameplay, yeah, quest and rewards based on class. 
So if you have this highlighted, it should mainly drop you items that are related to your actual class and not just general. I tend to keep that on, I don't know if there's much point to it or not. Well, damn, we need a feather fall item. Just gonna hope we get one drop. I can uh, show you the auctioneer as well. So there's a symbol here with like a hammer and table, or hammer and whatever that is, and you can buy items from other players there either for gold or shards if you go on the shard exchange and shards are obviously a pay, uh, paid currency in the game so if you want to be able to do anything in the game you can't conventionally, it's usually shards you can buy shards with DDO points DDO points are what you'll buy expansions with and other things on the store but shards are a way to do things in game with NPCs and stuff so we head all the way back here unfortunately and we'll go to this place here, it's like a little grove. This acts as like an entrance to a bunch of different areas, but you can access the borderlands from here. And he'll be one of the first people you see. There he is. Yep. Now like I said, there are eight quests in this area. I don't think we'll actually run any because we don't need to, but I'll show you where they are. There's an auctioneer in here as well and somewhere you can sell stuff to. There's a mailbox and trainers for all your different classes and these are the eight different quests so there's plenty to do here this guy Morton Edgewright is a weaponsmith so if you get the things he needs he will make you a custom weapon for whatever sp uh, specification you want so we're gonna get him to make us a scepter of nullification which is a scepter that boosts your critical chance with negative damage spells and just your negative damage in general and it's worth having you won't find anything better as a random loot drop in my experience um, for quite a while, at least until level 3 or 4. So this is the Borderlands Wilderness area. You can see we've got the Slayers, the Explorers and the Rare Encounters like I was talking about in Korthos. And some have more than others, this one's got 15 Rare Encounters instead of 3. And the rewards are probably slightly bigger for doing that, obviously, because it's more work. So I'll show you the general layout, if you go this way, this is the way to get to the quest entrances over that hill there, and there are two rare encounters that way. If you go this way, it kind of starts this circuit of various rare encounters all the way across the map, and it'll bring you back all the way over to that end. So either way is fine. We're not running any quests, so I can just go in this direction. I think it's one of the nicer looking wilderness areas. It's fairly modern as well, and there are lots of squirrels to beat to death. Critical hit, I just had to rub it in. So one of the rare encounters spawns over here in this mud heap. Rare encounters are completely random. They're, we've spawned this one this time, but every time you enter into the wilderness area and you reset, um, which you can do on the entrance page, all the rare encounters will randomize. So you'll get some, you won't get others. Sometimes it's really hard to find one you want, and you have to keep re-entering until it spawns. But the rare items in this area will spawn in any chest. It's totally randomized. So we've got Traveler's Braces, Cold Resistance, Fire Resistance, and it's got a blue slot. Now this is a feather token, if you get 15 of these, you can go and get a horse. So whether you want to um, whether you want to harvest all those or not, it's totally up to you, it's free to do. Um, and you'll move twice as fast in public areas as you regularly would, so it's really handy. And it's you can also use them in wilderness areas, so if you need to blitz straight through a wilderness area to get to a quest entrance, they are very useful to have. I have one on my main account, um, most of my accounts. It takes anywhere from 45 minutes to 2 hours to farm enough of the tokens. Obviously, <clears throat> like with other things in the game, you can just pay for it. But if I were to pay for it, that would defeat the point of the show. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're we'll up this way, and there's another few rare encounters. If you go up this hill, there's one. If you go down there, there's one in the cobwebs. So I'm just running through them to hopefully get some ethereal ingots, which is what we need to get our magic related items. Or is it? No, it's not ethereal. Uh, maybe it is. I think ethereal is ghost touch. There's silver. Oh, we need arcane ingots, yeah. See, 
if we can blast this guy with a fire spell. Oh, wrong <laughs> Ah, we have enough XP to level. Because we found the windmill at the same point as killing those guys. One thing to watch out for with wolves is they're exceptionally good at tripping you over. And unless your balance skill is pretty decent, they will trip you over. Uh, at, whip, at which point, sorry, you can't attack at all, you can't heal yourself. You're pretty much helpless for a few seconds, depending on how good your balance skill is. Oh, he spawned as well. Getting good luck today. And it just gives the enemies a chance to beat you up while you're on the floor, which is never good. What have you dropped for me? We got a nullify scepter of good luck, which is good. We need nullif nullification, so that works. And an ethereal ingot, so we can make a ghost touch weapon. So ghosts conventionally you can't hit. Unless you have a ghost touch weapon or a spell that allows you to. That's plus one intelligence. I mean, why not? We've already got plus one, and those don't stack, so you will only gain plus one from one of those items. Which is a bit of a shame, but it's just how the game works. What's this? Vitality. Plus two to hit points, sign me up. Actually, sorry. That would have a spell failure on it. 15%. So 15% of our spells won't even cast if we put that on. It's not something I'm going to do. And we'll equip the scepter. Come on. Oh, weird. Um, you can slot in, like I said, you can slot in these two, for example. So we have the scepter giving us a bonus, and we also have the sword. Kind of a perfect combination at this point in the game for this character. Oh, we can't jump down there because we've done a feather fall. Oops. This could be a problem. What if I land in the water? Will that kill me? Oh, not only minus three. That should be minus thirty. So I can either keep grinding until I get my arcane ingots, or we can head back, take our level, and keep questing. I'm not really bothered either way. So I'll decide once I've seen if this next room count as there. Can't jump through there. If only I dash points into the most important skill of swim. Be able to go through there much faster. It's not the worst skill in the game, but it's really only one you put points into if you're so rich for points that you don't know what to do with the rest. There should be a griffin around here. I think I've gone the right way. That's if it spawns, actually. It'd be pretty incredible luck to get the first three. Oh, and we did get the first three. This is a very fortunate playthrough. Sorry, King B. Look you in the eye while I kick you. Oof. They'll come at once. Oh, he's killed a deer. Bastard. There we go, we've got Featherfall. That's very handy. I know that we're already wearing a cloak, but that cloak is shit. So there we go. Now, when you jump off things, you will just glide like an angel. You can hold shift to drop faster. That will get you full damage though, so be careful with that. Um, we'll see if Spider-Man's here. There really is very little odds of this person being here as well. Oh my god, we've got the fourth one in a row. This has never happened to me outside of this video. So, and I've been through here probably a hundred times. Very unusual. Kinda makes me want to keep going just in case. Hang on, did I? No, I thought I was hallucinating there. Jesus. Nice. Arcane ingots. No. I don't know the Helm of Clarity. 
We need one of those, like we needed a hole in the head. And that gave us some pinches of fine sand, so I can jump now. Oh, I gave it to the... See? I was talking about this. If you have him highlighted and you click that spell, it's going to give it to that stupid knight instead of me. This boosts your jump skill very high. Is it? Well, it's only 18 at the moment. As you level, though, you'll hit the 40 roof for that specific skill. 40 is the max jump skill you can have. And it's a little excessive, but jump is very handy in a lot of quests. Also, obviously, you can get it in potion form, as I was saying before. We picked one up in the last quest. Get pretty much everything in potion form. So if you want to go and buy a bunch of resistance pots to, like, fire and acid and stuff so that you don't get one-shotted by traps, that's worth doing. Um, you might want to get curse removal potions because some curses are just game-breakingly annoying. Uh, potions of restoration if you get, like, over-encumbered by something because that's also really annoying. Yeah, there are lots of little things you can keep in your inventory. I haven't got them yet because you get so little space to start off with that keeping a full tab out of, like, maybe useful items just doesn't make sense to me at this point. If I was playing on harder difficulties, I would. And if I was playing on hardcore, I would. Some lizard folk. Oh my word, we've got the fifth one in a row. That's so unusual. I don't know if they've changed it so that you always you get every encounter. I certainly didn't used to have this kind of luck. Get back here. Don't shoot me when I open this. Thank you. We got another one of these, and we got another ethereal ingot. Damn. Well, means we can have two ghost touch weapons. We might get a staff of ghost touch because that's useful to have. I can bother with him. If I could just get one arcane ingot, I would be very satisfied with this run. The lag in this wilderness area is quite noticeable. <laughs> be good to get out of here. It's like a day by day basis. I was I was in here yesterday, or well, it was actually it was a couple of days ago. I was getting no lag whatsoever. I guess it's Sunday evening in the states right now, so maybe that explains the lag. I don't know when people generally play this game the most. See, that fire spell just has such crazy distance. If you're like too lazy to run back across the map to kill something, it's so useful. So there's usually you can get a rare encounter there and over there, but we didn't get those. And there's one up here as well. And we got him, so that's good. And there's about, oh, I think there's five more, but there's only three more on this route. And then we have to go back to the start and go the opposite direction. I'm not going to bother with that though, even if I don't get my ingot. Grab wants a piece of the action. Okay. We're actually, you can see the full XP reward you've gotten in here so far. So we've basically gotten the XP as if we'd run information is key on hard. Um, I know it's taken longer, but the loot is far better and it's a bit more interesting. So keep in mind, wilderness areas can be really good, especially for your first life. We got another one. What are the odds? And another quail feather token. So if I collect things like this, like if I'm farming them, I'll just slot my feather tokens. Oh, they must go to my collectibles. I'll slot them in the hotbar so I can see them tick up as I collect them. Why not? We'll do one more rare encounter before I recall, because I can acknowledge that this might be a little boring to watch. Um, I could even speed it up in the video editing process, but I don't know if I will. Still, it's useful information. I am getting very low on spell points.
Oh, we've been tripped. They didn't actually manage to land any hits on me when I was on the ground, but that can be a very lethal thing in a quest. Some very cool details in this wilderness map. I mean, generally, across all of the maps, that it is pretty interesting, like the architecture and what well, they've decided to hide in places, but this one in particular, I like. Do we kill the fox? Do we, we'll hurt no one. Yes. I missed him. It's a lucky day. There's no encounter here, I think I'll back out and go to a quest. And it looks like that's the case. So you win some, you lose. We got Featherfall, and we'll get some Ghost Touch items, and we also got that Nullified Scepter, which... The buff for that is honestly on par, and it's got luck on it, so... That's not too bad. Actually, it did pretty well. We can take our level now too, which means we can spend some points, maybe get, I think we get a feat at this level, um, and we'll choose some enhancements and stuff. So to get those weapons, you can head over to Morton like I showed you, and we're going to be getting maybe a Ghost Touch Quarter Star. Let's see. Where's the other roots? So silver's good against certain types of undead. Yeah, lycanthropes and vampires. So really, Ravenloft for the bulk of it, and um, some of Necropolis. All right, so we've got an ethereal short sword we could use. Quarter staff. Grab that. We'll grab one of those. Cool. And if we slot that here, as along with, I'll make a weapon set along with this one. Then we can swap easily between the two. I've got my ghost touch quarter stuff. I've got my two weapons. Very handy indeed. Oh, we don't want to go to Corthos, but we want to go to the gatekeepers. No, we are. I'm going back to the harbor and we'll take our level. So the I think we'll get a meta magic feat at this level. I could be wrong. I'll have a look. Usually after I get maximize, I get in power. That's just another damage buffing spell. Um, and then you can get all kinds of things like extend and um, enlarge, heighten, quicken. You can make your spells very very powerful. Where's the wizard? There you are. Hid from me. So advance to the next level is wizard. Drop point into concentration, spellcraft, if you can. Uh, disable device. Open lock search. That would be my my choices for this level. You could put some in spot as well. Okay. And I go from power, like I was saying. Um, you can get any of these, sorry. Enlarge, issue, extend, you can't get heightened yet, you have to be high level, and quicken. Uh, you can really pick anything, you get greater, you can get spell penetration. I wouldn't at this level, I don't think there's much need. Um, <clears throat> there's some other options, but that, this was what I'd go for. And we get to pick some spells. So, two more level one spells. I'm gonna take... Sonic Blast recently got nerfed quite a bit, but I'll take it anyway. It's a different type of spell to what we have. God, don't really care for any of these. Guess we're good. Oh, you can get that in the enhancement tree. It's well as shield, so. And you get them as SLAs, which is a lot cheaper to cast. Oh, you know, we'll just get copper. There we go. We are level 3. And that means that we can take our enhancement, oh, our feet, sorry, of enlarge out, empower, and turn it on. And then go through your spells, make sure that it's always on these guys. Maybe we'll turn in power on for this one, so it'll cost more, but it'll do more damage. Cool. Nice, that's all done. 
and our spells, we can slot one more spell. And I guess we'll take Nunchu. Stick that there. Cool. I'll check out our enhancements and then I'll do one more quest and we'll call it a video. Stick the last one into here, that's an option. Um, we could go into negative energy conduit. So that when you get death aura which heals you with negative energy, that increases how much you're healed by. And it can go up to an absurd strength of like you're being healed hundreds of points each time. It's very useful. We'll just stick it into the last skeleton one. So this buddy is officially ready for use. Is <laughs> another person trying to move? I swear that's the person from the other day. Maybe my memory's fuzzy. God, I'd love that horse right now. Look at this. Epic journey. Oh, we can also get level 3 highlings. Sorry to go on such a... I'm gonna destroy these helmets. You can sell those. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, so... Oh, damn, you can't get level 3 highlings. We're just gonna keep going with level 2s. So what? Level 2s and 3s are in the harbour, and then 4 to 20 is in the marketplace. So I actually I haven't been in the marketplace yet for this series. This is, like the harbour, a massive area with tons of quests in it. Lots of trainers, lots of quest entrances. Lots of entrances to other areas, so all the main houses. You've got House P, House D, House J, House K, and House C is around here somewhere. Catacombs as well, House C. And these are some later level areas. And lots of taverns, so yeah, it's it's really good to get the quests and stuff. I've actually just picked up Fresh in the Air, which is my bad. You need to go talk to Basil, if you want. Red Fang. We'll play this on normal, because we have to. This quest has a ton of traps in it, which is kind of something I want to do, because I'm a trapper as well. Not the most amazing XP for this level, but I do just, I really like this quest and I don't tend to miss it. Come on, buddy. What? No. I came in now because we have Featherfall now. Oh, too late. <laughs> Jeez, that was a bit of a late warning. Thank you. Smashing the little eggs gets you poison damage. But they'll hatch anyway. Well, there's a lever back here, but I might as well smash these anyway. Yes, arsenic. Nice. I'm not gonna smash every box in this quest, don't worry. I'll be here all day. This might be a quest to not aim for a ransack on. I think I've tried in the past, I've gotten the full amount, but sometimes I try and I run it and I miss like a couple and then I don't get the full b bonus and that just bothers me to no end.
is some hidden ingredients, so if you want to fill up that ingredients bag or collect some stuff for augments or crafting, then these cabinets are one form of uh, ingredients. Holding shift, but I'm not going to hold it down right to the bottom because I'll probably die. And we've got another fire trap. My word. Not being so subtle today. I'm going to turn off Empower on this spell because I feel like it's just wasting too much of our spell points. I could just refrain from using that spell, but I tend to spam my hotkeys a bit. Damn it, I thought it was a one-time thing. Yeah, this is the highling intelligence I was talking about. If we were playing on elite difficulty, we would have just died. Completely. There's another trap here. Can I unlock it without... Is there a box? I don't think there is. Whatever. Hear one of my friends being beaten up. It's just shrines. Yep. Ah, there we go. I don't know how I missed that. Try one more time to find this thing. Oh, it's right there. And I'm doing this, of course, so that I get the Tampa bonus. The more traps you are disabled, the higher the bonus. Eh, garbage. Climbing at the wrong time? Yeah, there's so many breakables in this quest. I'm glad I didn't try and do them all. Didn't I light up? Jeez. Stuttery. These areas are heavily trapped. This one I think is just on that ground floor there. But later on there's going to be some shooting out of small directions. That chill touch is doing considerable amounts of damage really what it is. Not so good with this one, the necrotic touch. But it's something. If you only had one spell you'd be waiting for the timer constantly. some area of effect spells, you can just blast these breakables from a distance and it saves a lot of time and effort. Alright, yes it's this room. We need to get there. Oof, still hit me. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> That's treacherous. You guys get up here so that you don't die. I'm burdened. My strength has been reduced. That's okay though, because I don't use strength. my movement speed though, that drives me nuts. Nice. 
Yeah, we can't tumble right now. That would be because of our ability scores being decreased. Another fire trap coming up. Yep, <laughs> I just walked straight into it. Oh, I'm not having good luck today. That might indicate that our spot skill isn't too flash. The last few times I've had to be in the trap before I notice it. Oh, thank you. Your death was not in vain. I just remembered as I stepped in there. My brain's constantly trying to remember where the traps are, and it's like, oh no, it can't be there. I'm walking. Like, it hasn't triggered yet. I haven't had a warning. And then I get blasted. What is our spot skill? It's like 6? 4.5. Yeah, that's atrocious. We need to buff that up next level. So skills like that, we're going to be relying on items to buff that up. In fact, we have this that now boosts our intelligence. We would miss out on our spell power bonus, but we could put on the other item we got that buffs our spot skill. So we do already have one. I just felt that spell power was more important than seeing traps. And that is probably the case at this difficulty, because traps will very rarely kill you on normal. You have to try hard. Thank you very much. Yes. And that's that one. As you can see, like I said, it's not that great experience, but it's a fun quest with quite a few traps and chests and stuff, so I think it's worth doing. Bingo. Alright, well that's that was gonna be the last quest I ran, so I'd say that's a pretty good episode. Got lots done, managed to find some useful items. Our uh, character's going to be more useful now, so all in all, pretty good. And next time, I think I'm going to run, there's a chain in the marketplace I might run. Uh, if not that, then I'll start Tangaroo Gorge and show you where that is. And we need to check our damn mail soon, because that is driving me up the wall. Assume that we haven't hit 100 points. Nope, still on 75, but I'm sure we'll do that next time anyway. So thanks very much for watching, and I should see you next time.